Hello, I'm Darren Wood, and I'm going to give you a quick overview of Cubase for first time users or people who are just setting it up for the first time. Before you start, there's a couple of things you need. You need an audio interface, preferably not the one built in your computer, so not your computer sound card, but a professional audio interface to get good quality audio recorded onto Cubase. And secondly, you need a MIDI controller keyboard. Now this may be a MIDI port or run from a USB port. Uh, both will do the job. I've just pulled some from the internet just so we can have a look. So MIDI uh, keyboard controllers and uh, one I've picked off. If you're starting for the first time, you don't want one of these mini ones with these small little keys. It's quite cramped and compact, which are okay for someone mobile with a laptop. But I think you need some full-size keys and preferably about three octaves long. Uh, so this is one I've found. As you can see, you've got one, two, three. There's four octaves on this one. This was about 55 quid. Uh, it's a good one. And I think this is a USB keyboard. And so you can just plug it into your USB port and... Um, Cubase will pick it up as a MIDI interface. Okay, uh, so that's the keyboard sorted. I, I did say you need a audio interface as well. So because we're using Steinberg Cubase, I thought I'd quickly show you the um, Steinberg UR22 Mark II interface. It's sort of the minimum spec interface you'd probably want to go for. Let's have a look at the front panel here. So on, on this interface, you can plug in a, a jack plug into the center hole here or here, and also an XLR microphone cable here or here. So you, as you can see, you've got an input volume level uh, for the signal going in on uh, both connections. You've got input one and input two. You've got headphone level. So if you want to plug a pair of headphones in and listen back without using any speakers, you've got that and you've got your output level which goes out to your speakers and then you've got an input mix control so it mixes between the input and the signal playing back from Cubase also you've got a high input on input 2 now if we look on the back of the audio interface you can see uh, we've got various things on the back you've got your line out which would plug into a set of speakers. So if you twiddled the output level, that would adjust the level coming out of the line out to your speakers. Also, we've got a MIDI 5 DIN port, a MIDI in. If your controller keyboard was a MIDI keyboard uh, with a MIDI socket, you could plug it in and uh, use this Yamaha box to actually receive the MIDI information. So some of the older keyboards uh, didn't have USB, but they had MIDI sockets, so you could use a 5-pin DIN lead for that. And if you've got any outboard keyboards or maybe some sound modules that play the sounds from the module and not through the software, you could plug a MIDI out of this port and plug it into a, a, a MIDI sound device. You've also got USB 2. This, this is the port that sends the communications between the box and your computer. So that, that would need to be plugged in. And that should give you power as well through that. But alternatively, you can run it through a 5 volt DC power socket, which might be handy if you're using a, a laptop or something like that and uh, you might need a little bit more power so you could use you could use that as well some microphones use a, a power source called phantom power if you've got a condenser microphone you would need to switch on the phantom power button on the back which is plus 48 volts phantom power and then these xlr sockets would send phantom power to the microphone so it's quite a nice box, only two inputs, so you could only record two things at the same time. So if you wanted to record a drum kit with this box, you would only be able to use two microphones on the drum kit. So you'd probably have maybe one inside the kick drum maybe, or maybe a couple of feet away from the kick drum, and another one over the top of the uh, um, drum kit, maybe just above the player's head, and you'd get a, quite a nice uh, live sound that way. 
But if you wanted to record a whole drum kit separately, micing up all the drums, like the kick drum, snare drum, hi hats, uh, tom toms, and floor toms, and then the cymbals and the overheads and the room mic, you're going to need a bigger uh, interface with more inputs to do that. Um, so you'd need to invest in quite a bit more money. I think this box retails at around about 100 quid at the minute. So it's, it's, it's not a bad investment, really. And apparently it works on an iPad as well. If you've got any software, recording software on an iPad, you can always use it on that as well. And I'm sure there's plenty of other makes of audio interfaces that can do similar stuff. I just thought I'd pull you a basic model just to get us started. So let's go back to the software. So once we've got our audio interface plugged in and our MIDI controller keyboard, we need to tell Cubase to use them. So if we go to uh, Devices and we look at Device Setup. Okay, I'm just going to pull this up because it's gone on the wrong screen. So let's go to VST Audio System. This controls our audio interface. And we're going to be using the ASIO driver. And we're going to select one from the list. So as you can see, I've got various different drivers here because there's different sound devices on my computer. Uh, the one I use is the ASIO Hammer 4 DSP driver because I use the RME Hammer 4 card which has got 24 inputs plus 2 SPDIF inputs so quite a lot of inputs to select there you would select obviously whatever interface you're using um, we've got some other ones in the list here we've got the ASIO DirectX full duplex driver which is quite an old sort of driver uh, which some of the built-in sound cards would use. Um, not a very good one to use, it wouldn't work very well with that. If you are using your built-in sound card, you might want to try the generic low latency ASIO driver, uh, which may work, it may not, but it's not, not really terrific. You really want a standalone audio interface like the one I showed you earlier for any good results and low latency. So, as you can see, I've got mine set on the hammer form, I'm going to leave it on there. Um, is there anything to talk about on this page? Um, not really. I mean, these settings, I would leave them as they are and uh, not worry about them unless you come into problems later on as you start using your system. So just leave them as, as they're set. Now, because I've chosen the ASIO Hammer 4 DSP driver, it puts it in the list at the bottom as that's the one that's being used. I can click on that. And then you get a little control panel box that sort of shows you what your system is using. Uh, because my card has got a lot of inputs and outputs, 24 inputs, 24 outputs, plus SP diff left and right, yours would only have inputs 1 and 2 here, and outputs 1 and 2. If you were using something like the Steinberg UR22 Mark II, you don't have to do just anything to start with on this section. Apart from if you're using uh, the direct monitoring from the ASIO driver, you should tick this. And that, what that will do, when you press record on Cubase, it will mirror the signal coming in on the import and send it directly out of the output without actually going through Cubase. It does it through the device itself. And that means you get zero latency audio monitoring. And what the latency is, it's the delay of the computer processing the signal and playing it back. You can get a delay and uh, if the delay becomes too big it becomes quite hard for the musician to play listening to himself back. So this um, direct ASIO monitoring stops any delay. The disadvantage of this is if you use any software plugins live like uh, maybe distortion or reverb or anything like that, compressors on the input in Cubase Live, that isn't heard until you play it back. So that's the disadvantage of that. But generally speaking, I, I leave that ticked on most of the time. Right, so we've got we've got Cubase loaded up and as you can see there's not a lot there at the minute. This area here is our arranged window. Uh, this panel here holds each track if you think of a track as um, a lane with anything recorded on it, uh, this will hold all our lanes or our tracks. Um, 
so each time we add a new track to record on, a new one pops up here. Uh, on this very left hand uh, page is the inspector. So anything this track is told to do will be shown in this the inspector, so like the volume level. Uh, if we've added any effects to the track, it will appear in the inspector. So far we've looked at you need a MIDI controller keyboard and a proper audio interface to get Cubase working professionally. On the next video we're going to look at Cubase and how to set up a track and record a basic recording.